Where, where? Anything else we're oh, going to be talking about this week? Uh, uh, that that no, nothing else really has happened of no. Oh, there we are. Burn. If you're a proud Englishman, then why don't you play for us in the first place? 2,000 retweets, 15,000 likes. <laughs> so I'm just thinking the population is about 5 million. I reckon that's about what? One in, one in every... 300 Irish people have liked that yeah. tweet. And uh, I see there's around 1,200 replies. Yeah. 1,200 replies. How many of them have you read? And how many of them have... I've read a how lot. How many of them have West Ham crests? There's them? a lot that I... I, I kind of came off Twitter. For, I didn't come off Twitter. I just kind of was off working and things like that. And I went back on, on this morning. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. And then I did notice that there was a lot of uh, yeah, tweets from West Ham fans. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. they're very reasonable. No, well, no, that, they, that's a well thought out argument you make there, Kevin. Thank you for your input to yeah. uh, the Declan Rice situation. Yeah. West Ham fans are very relaxed. I mean, I'm sure if, if Declan Rice ever decides to leave West Ham for Oof. another club because it's better for his career, I'm sure they'll be chilled yeah. about the whole situation. I mean, listen, why wouldn't he want to play in more? Exactly. Why wouldn't he want to play in the Champions League? Well, no, exactly. I, and the decision to make, I never would have been, never would have thought I'd be put in that position. I, yeah. I don't think that's what that. He, he could say he could, he could release a similar statement. To be honest, yeah, exactly. Just, it's a just very similar statement. Put, change the change a few of the things uh, lettering or a few of the words that's in the statement. And yeah. You're particularly you annoyed about the line. I am a proud Englishman. Who are you not? I'm not being funny. I, I was listening to to the lads last night when you were on. I heard you talking to to Gary and Joe and and Joe. Would, Joe, I think Joe even misinterpreted saying, he was more or less saying I'm a proud English and a proud Irishman. He never mentioned once being a proud Irishman. He mentioned about the no, proud he said, of his heritage. Yes. did affinity. mention being a proud Irishman. He, there was, no, there was a line about an affinity to both Ireland and England or love. I or have something. equal respect for both England and Ireland and therefore the national team I chose to represent is not a clear-cut, simple selection. He says, I'm a proud Englishman having been born and raised in London. However, I am just as proud of my family's yeah. Irish heritage and my affinity and connection with the country. Mm. Mm. Well, you see, that, that's, that's it's well written, isn't it? It's a great, great piece. I, I, don't, I don't know how long it would have taken to proofread that, but yeah. What's wrong with that? I think though. we're reading a lot into the state. I think are we reading a lot into the state? No, exactly. There's but the, it's all we have to read into. No, I know. It's but like, I, I, I think it's very polished, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's a very polished statement, and it's a lot of nonsense. That's what it is. So that's the way that I read it. Um, I, I, You're you know, happy he's gone, Kev. I'm, I'm happy it's sorted. I yeah. said to you six months ago, I wouldn't have picked him again. I generally stand by that. So in that context, are you happy that... Uh, I mean, if he had announced yesterday that he was, he was coming back, you... I mean, I'm sensing you would have felt a bit uneasy. I, well, without a doubt. And I'm yeah. sure there would have been players in the squad that would have been uneasy as well. They wouldn't say it openly, but I, I would have been. Do you? Yeah, definitely. 100%. 100%. Definitely. And I know one or two of the players in there, and I know that there would have been, definitely. Well, there's also players who clearly weren't uneasy. David Myler, within a minute yeah. of Declan Rice putting out this statement, sent a tweet saying, listen, best of luck, yeah. see well, you around, type yeah. thing, which he quickly deleted when uh, he realised that he too was getting about 1,200 responses. Oh, really? Oh, uh, and his I next, actually missed that his, now. Yeah. His next tweet was, obviously everybody doesn't agree with me. Mm. No, no. But what, what, what yeah, you there are FIFA bodies, say? I think. How, right how, how, how can any, how can any, anybody be accepting of that line when you say that I'm, I'm a very proud Englishman? You've played. You, you've if played he had said so I'm often. a proud Englishman and a proud Irishman, would no, that he have should have just difference? taken that line cleanly out of that statement. But he is a proud Englishman. Yeah, well, he was clearly, born and clearly, raised in England. Clearly, he's a proud Englishman. Well, he shouldn't play for us then. That's my point. Don't play for us if you're a proud Englishman. Why come and play for us in the first place? Why? But how do we know Michael Obafemi isn't a proud Englishman? Well, well, we'll see them, won't we? We'll see. But he could be a proud Englishman. He could be proud of his Nigerian heritage. He could be proud of being born in Ireland. Yeah, well, it I doesn't make any difference. The only difference is he's played a competitive game. Yeah, but caught. But honestly, uh, no matter how you, we go around in circles all day on this, right? We will do, and we, we've probably gone around in circles for six months on it because as soon as he de declined that call up, then that was it. It was gone in my mind as it as it is. He's, he was never going to change his decision, was he? That let's be fair. Let's be fair on that. But you're making a statement like you're a proud Englishman. You're coming to play for Ireland, and you're standing there. You're singing the national anthem with pride. You're kissing the badge with pride. It doesn't. How, how can you do that? You can't. You can't do that, knowing full well that he's talked about his family heritage and and where and where and what his grandparents are, uh, have come from, what they've meant to him. Everything, everything within that. It's. It can never ever. It can never ever just come down to you saying. I'm an Englishman now. I I kind of like playing for Ireland because it suited my needs at that particular time. 
it, you think of all the players that have come through the system here and what it means to them. I understand that when I first probably came into the 21 squad, there'd have been a lot of people within that setup or around in the 21 setup when I was there that would have been uneasy with me. Who's this, like, who's this guy coming to take my shirt? Who's this guy? Yet yeah, he's taken the shirt and now he's kind of shit all over it further on down the line. Kev, is your issue with the, the concept? I mean, do you understand like the concept that someone could feel both ways? You know that someone could feel English and Irish. Is your issue with the? Is it his previous comments and his previous of course actions? It is. Because that's what it is. Of course, because, it but is. that would be interpreted in some ways. Like the, the your views have been interpreted in some ways as people thinking that that you don't embrace the concept that that people can feel. You're either both. English or you're Irish. Irish. Well, like, but but you know who you are when you get picked for a certain side. You can't actually then turn around and say, I'm not Irish anymore. But not I'm everybody sorry. does. That, like, I, like, the Michael Obafemi example is going to become far more common over the coming years, where I think a lot of the people that we have welcomed to this country from various parts of the of world, course. we want them to feel Irish, but if they want Without to feel Nigerian as well, or whatever other country they're from, surely that's okay. They don't need to go, yeah, they, just because they line out for Ireland, I am now 100% Irish and I'm no longer a proud Englishman, or a proud Nigerian, or a proud South African, or a proud Polish person. It, like, where do you draw the line? No, but that's, but that's, that's, not, that's not the point though, is it, Nathan? They, they, if, they, if someone who was playing for Ireland, like Michael Obafemi, Michael Obafemi would not come out and make a statement now that I'm a, plow, a proud Englishman. He wouldn't make that statement, because now he is essentially an Irishman that's part of the system that's playing for our side. But he has actually done exactly the same. He's got more caps than Michael Obafemi. He's got more caps than than a lot of Irishmen that have, mm. that have come through the system. And now, all of a sudden, because that opportunity has come to him to go and switch allegiances, he's gone and done that. It's, it, but he's not the first to switch allegiances. Like, yeah, take, of course take one of our best players at the I moment. I don't agree with it, I don't agree with it at all. I don't Shane Duffy was on the bench for a senior international, and I understand the situation is very different between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, but he was on the bench for a senior international yeah. for Northern Ireland. If Nigel Worthington had decided 10 years ago to bring him off the bench, he would have played for Northern Ireland. Now, yeah. he could have still changed because it was a friendly. But does your opinion on Shane Duffy no, differ whether he had played one minute in that game but, well, or stayed on the bench? There's, there's, there's a lot of differences between it, isn't there? That w d d d Obviously, uh, things changed politically 10, 15, 20 years ago, whenever it was. Everything's changed politically within that as well. He's come through a system up there where there was only hope for him to play for, essentially play for Northern Ireland at schoolboy level. Then he's in the system. You, you're in the system. It's different. It's, it's it's he would have grown up, then get into a stage where he's he's obviously becoming more mature, and he's starting to progress, and he's thinking in his own head, right? Well, where have I seen myself growing up? I'm an Irishman essentially. I want to play for Ireland. I've supported the Republic of Ireland through my youth, through my um, through my development. I want to play for Ireland because I'm I am essentially an Irishman. I'm an Irishman. That's why that's why I want to play for. That's his right to. This is very, very different from that because he has actually gone through our system. He's played at senior international level and then changed over. It's what I'm saying is not that different because it, well, well, I think he went through their underage system did, and it is. It was is involved very different. with their senior team. But this is coming back to words and actions in some way. I think it all comes back to words and actions. I think the, the, the comparison with the, the players who played the Northern Irish system, that stands up when you... That's why I have no sympathy for the FEI in this position because they play the games... <clears throat> they played the game the same as anybody else. However, I mean, the difference is, I mean, Shane Duffy didn't sing God Save the Queen, didn't speak about how much it meant to him to, to be called off for Northern Ireland and, and sort of, you know, tugged the heartstrings in some degree in, in terms of what he said. Now, I, I, I still believe that, that Declan Rice was sincere in, in, in some of, you know, in, in probably a lot of things that he said about that, that it did mean something to his family that he was involved. So I, I think that's where the, the, the comparison is slightly different between McLean and, and Duffy. I mean, they were never speaking about their love hmm. for Northern Ireland. The they they the used the kids. system. The question is, did Rice if, use if, if, if the Irish listen, system? Listen to Gary Breen last night, and uh, I agree with him 100%. When you sign your, your first professional contract, you should know where you, where, where you are. You, that, that it should actually be almost set in stone at that time. I, that's the way I see it, and that's the way it is. You, you know then you, you know then when you're growing up who you want to play for. But does that... Uh, I, 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 like, in a way, I, I agree with you on that, that... There, has, there should come an earlier point where you have to make a decision. But that works for Ireland's case, and it probably works for some of the smaller countries. You would worry, say, what a country like France might do, who so many of the young players growing up in France who end up playing for their home countries, playing for countries in Africa, who you'd worry that France suddenly start capping 50 players at under 18 level. They're never going to get to play for their senior team just to hoover up all the talent. 
Yeah. Um, at a very young age. Well, that's what. Well, there's a bit of that happening now. Like, a bit of that happening now, even with the English FA, in mm. terms of their, how they, they're now more active. I mean, the English FA were asleep at the wheel for years when it came to this topic. I mean, see, uh, the point that you make about someone writing on a form, I, 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 I sort of find myself agreeing with it, but at the flip side of that is. The argument is, I mean, th- there's a lot of people then who will never get to play international football at all. You know, and I know yeah, you're saying, well, funny. well, why right, should be funny, right? So don't feel right, that way. Okay, okay, right. So if if I'm, so I'm 24 years of age, I've not played for any country and all of a sudden I start to progress and do well and I get called up by England. I honestly couldn't have stood there and listened to the national anthem and, 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 and as I say, have that pride that's within you. It, it, you know, it, it, half half of the pride when you're playing for for your country is is listening to the anthem, knowing what it means to you and your family. That's that's half of it. Now you're taking all that out of it, and I know, I, I'm, and again, it may be something that Gary said last night. And maybe I'm a I'm a total romantic in that respect, and I get that. I, I I know that that a lot of people don't feel like me on that respect. In that respect, but it's 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 there for us. It's there for it, that in my mind is how it is. When you're growing up, you should play for the country that that you actually see. See, see the flag. See, uh, listen to the anthem, and everything that that, that 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 entails, because that is what's within you. That that is that's what it means to play for that country. I don't necessarily think because somebody comes and moves over, say someone came over and moved to England, and because they've moved to England, they were born in Australia, wherever it was, then they can qualify to play for for Northern Ireland, for Scotland, for Wales, for for England, or, or whoever it would be. There's there's no there's, you, there's no allegiance to the country. There is absolutely nothing within that. The rule states you can play, brilliant. Do I want to get on board with our rugby side where we're actually just nationalising people that have been in the country for three or four years? No, I do not. It's the, they're not Irish, so why are they playing for our country? That's the way that it is. That's the way that I think. I can't change my mind on that. It's how I was brought up from a boy. So I, I don't know what you want me to say here. Yes, I understand that people have different opinions from me and people think differently from me. I'm not going to change my mind on it. And 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 get on board with that statement that Declan Rice has made, that I'm a proud Englishman. I can't get on board with that because it's total rubbish. It is total rubbish. In my mind, that's the way that I feel on it. And that's fair enough. Yeah. Gary said last night, and this will probably, maybe it will be an issue going forward, or maybe everyone just forgets about it and moves on with their lives until it crops up again, is he said it shouldn't be used as an audition that Declan Rice playing at underage level, it makes a mockery of playing from underage group. Like, I guess that's not Declan Rice's problem. It's the FAI's problem. Mm-hmm. And it's not a case of us just accommodating second, third generation Irish players. The FAI are actively going out trying to recruit that's been second years. and that's third Irish generation our, players. That's, that's, been, that's, 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 that's our norm. So this is, this is going to crop up again. Yeah, this oh. is going to be an issue again. I mean, does does a young kid at West Ham who's been on the bench in the last mm. couple of weeks called Connor Coventry? He was on the bench for a couple of uh, FA Cup games and he's been on the fringes. I mean, he was he was Irish under nineteen player of the year. He's English born. You know, he's, he seems to be well regarded at, at, at West Ham. And like as I said, the problem is because of what's happened with Rice and uh, with Grealish that there's going to be scepticism around every single, like unless they, you know, no matter what they come out and say, there's always going to be this belief that. They, they the might, the they thing might is, the squad, the, the, the squad themselves. You were looking at me like I had two heads before, and I mentioned about the, the, the people within the squad that be that will be pissed off with this. I've been in there, and I can tell you now, every one of the players when I was part of that squad, when you had a lad come in, now I'll, I'll, I might hang fire on that. Were pissed off at it, every single one of them that were in the squad, and I doubt it's changed. It, it's only it's only eight years later. Mm. It's, it, it hasn't changed. And if it has changed, I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised, really, really surprised, that as soon as Declan Rice has turned down the chance to go and play alongside those players, that, that he would be welcomed back 100% within that side. Because in the back of your mind, you've got someone who was willing to jump ship. That's what it is. And he has jumped ship now, thanks very much. On you go. I've, I've got no problem. Everyone thinks that there's no problem, with, for, in my mind, for him declaring for England. I couldn't give a... Sh- I couldn't give a toss about that. I really couldn't. It's no issue to me that. But the problem being is that he has, as you say, used the shirt, auditioned for better things by by playing for us. And yeah, under twenty ones, I under, I understand it to an extent, maybe at eighteens, nineteens, or whatever it would be. But when you're getting under under twenty one level, you know, you know, when certainly when you get into senior level, it shouldn't even be. Ah, it shouldn't, shouldn't even be talked about. That's it. The rule has to change, simply has to change, in my mind, because it, it's, it's a farce. There's nothing to suggest, though, then, that the rule is going to change. In fact, if anything, the rules may become 
even more lax. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different views yeah. on this. I mean, I, I think I, I, did I see Miguel right in his piece suggested it should be even more flexible to some degree. And there is there's there's a variety of different opinions out there in this. I mean, you go back in time and you had the example, was it Tim Cahill who played one game, was it for... Yeah, he could have played for us as well. Yeah, he could have played for Ireland and he played... He's over in England on a British yeah, passport. Yeah, yeah, and he on played... On an Irish passport, I, I, I feel... This, I, should, I should know the name of the, the, the country he played for initially. Was it one of the Samoan? Yeah, yeah. And, and then he... And that was an issue, but basically he was able to... He was able to go and play yeah. for Australia. Well, that, was about, that was about under un- fourteen level though. Yeah, I think the switching around. I mean, I, I think there's ways it could be tightened up, but I think it's unlikely. I'd like to think even competitive under twenty one or something that yeah. it could be. There could be some kind of the cut off. But like, I do think that you know the profile. You know, the, I think there, is there a difference? And I, you, you tell me, like, you know, you're you've a, you've a, there's a first generation Irish and there's a second generation yeah. Irish, and there's the the, the London community that Declan Rice grew up in and his parents, it, it would have been a very different one to the one that you probably would have, yeah, the Irish community definitely. you would have grown up in. And as I said, I said it yesterday, that, that, we'll, we'll know people or friends or, mm. you know, who, who might have, it might be, a, you know, an Irish husband and an English wife or vice versa. And uh, the, the complication of their identity, you know, their identity, it's a complex yeah. situation. And maybe at 16, 17, they may not know who they are as much as, as, much as you did, you know, as much as you were shaped by yeah. your, your own life experiences. And, and uh, everyone is different. But I, I, at the same time, I'm not giving them a pass at all. I, I don't like how it's being conducted, you know, in, in any way. Um, but, I mean, I'm sorry, we're, going, we're sort of going back no, to the same I, point. I, 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 but the rules different. probably aren't going to change. It is different. They should, but it they is won't. different from... Declan Rice clearly obviously thinks different from me. Of course he does, mm. and, and Gary and, and people like this. I, underst- I understand that. that. That's not that. I think that's probably not the issue. Probably it, we maybe shouldn't be targeting lads that have got one Irish granny or grandfather, whoever it would be. Maybe we shouldn't be doing that. I underst- but I understand it's, it's there, the exploit, the exploit, the we, mm. we have exploited Everybody the else is doing it, though, so yeah, you're I know putting that. yourself at a disadvantage. Well, I know that. I know yeah. that. Uh, but it leads to this. It leads to this. And, and, and people can say about the, the, the Northern Ireland issue, but... I, I don't know. It, it, this is it is very different because of, because of how Declan Rice has spoke. You, you can't tell me that James McLean or Shane Duffy, the only thing that they wanted to do when they were six and seven years of age, when they were running around the house, they'd been running around the shirts, uh, running around the house in an Irish shirt, in a, in a Republic of Ireland shirt. That's what they would have been doing. And that this is very different. It is very different. No matter no matter how you try and. Yeah, try and break it down. It's very different. I don't think anyone has too much sympathy for Declan Rice in all of this, but. In one way, what you're talking about there, like 15, 16, he may well have been quite shocked with what's developed over the past year, that he did make a decision at 15, 16 to come <laughs> over, see how it would go, not thinking that within three years he was, we were going to be pinning our footballing hopes for the next decade on his shoulders. Yeah, I, I know. I guess so. I mean, I, I I don't know what I mean. We're sort of questioning the belief that he had himself had in himself here. I mean, mm. did he know he he, he was has he surprised himself that yeah. he's a very good player? Like, I, I mean, once once he went to Turkey last year. I mean, I, I think like it's his comments. It's there's the actions and there's the comments and some of the comments he made around the Turkey. Uh, I, 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 I said personally, personally, I wasn't pinning my hopes when he played in his first international against Turkey, wasn't he? I wasn't pinning my hopes on that. And mm. I, I everyone's. The, the, but I remember you had a tweet at some point. I think you actually congr- at one point you thought he was very much yeah. on board. I remember you were saying you can't change who exactly, you are. Exactly. Or words to that effect. What, what, what he'd said, but I, w- I want him to have. But I've seen a hundred Declan Rice's at every stage of my, my development, and it's no disrespect to Declan Rice. He's a fantastic footballer, and he, I'm sure he will go on and have a fabulous career. But who's to say in two years' time where he's going to be? So that's why you can never pin your hopes on a mm. 19 or 18 year old, 19 year old boy that he's going to go on and have the success he's going to have. It's it's, it's far too early for us to be to making that uh, suggestion. I'll tell you, if he was faking it, he's an unbelievable actor because watching back some of his interviews with Tony O'Donoghue on RTE last night when he was in the camp, like he ge- seemed genuine. He yeah. seemed as genuine I, I him in as Minfota, could be. I remember him in Photo Island when he was caught, and he, it was actually referenced in the statement. And it was another thing in the statement. It's one of these things where he says, in the context of a couldn't have expected how quickly things would have happened. He mentions how he made his Premier League debut and he was in an international squad two days later, as though the scale of the Irish thing surprised them too, right. to some degree. And you're sort of reading between the lines and every line was taught out. But I, mean, I remember we played for 21s in Tala last year after the Turkey game. I remember seeing him coming out of the dressing room. His dad was there. Mark O'Toole was there, the FAI talent scout who basically sourced him when he was at a low ebb, you know, and they had a very emotional embrace. And anyone who watched that scene would have believed it was the real deal. Anyone who watched that scene would have believed... 
yeah, this is this means a lot. No, no, no nobody, can, nobody can prepare you for the scrutiny that you're under as soon as you get into the under twenty one mm. and the and the senior international setup. You you're not you're not ready for it, I don't think. You know, some people can can handle it better than others. And when when all of a sudden you you're having nobody talking about you to everybody talking about you, it's it it, it, it causes different sort of mental issues within your yeah. own head, I think. It's diff it's difficult. No matter what anybody says, you, you want that, you dream of that, but you don't necessarily realise what actually is going to come with that when you when you make your international debut. And that's what he's had. He's had so much scrutiny on him. I, I, honestly, I've got there's a there's a lot of ill feeling towards him. You, of course, we wish him all the best, but he should have he should have just put it to bed six months ago. When he's when the rule is the rule. Yes, I understand that. But as soon as he said, "Look, I'm thinking about England," it was done. It was done. Why why were we? Why were do you we think it was done? Do you really think it was done then? That yeah. he was done then in terms of his decision. I, I, yeah, I do because you, as soon as you've had your head turned, I'm, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's been guarantees to him. He it, 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 he said at the end of that statement that of course there's no guarantees about mm. my England future. But Gareth Southgate has told him, look, you're going to be in the squad. He's done it with players that aren't playing to the level that Declan Rice is. He's yeah. brought them in, so Declan Rice will be in the England squad. Going do you think forward. it was a perfect storm last June with all the nonsense that was going on around the Ireland squad at the time? While well, England, this vibrant, young, exciting England teamer achieving at the World Cup finals mm. and then Gareth Southgate comes looking. He changed his agent last summer too. You can't you can't yeah. underestimate mm. that. I like that's Do you know uh, who his agent is now, who he is, Dan? Uh, Does he got links to any of the other England players? Uh, I, I, I know the I know the name of the agent like the agent is Neil Fewings is his name. Right. Um and he, he would have it's funny, Danny Murphy came out a couple of weeks ago and spoke very strongly about Rice going away and I think Murphy would have been represented by yeah. well, Dan, Dan, Danny Murphy during himself his ha has got a similar Irish background to Declan yeah. Rice. His grandparents are Irish. He could have played for us. But he doesn't see himself as Irish. He wanted mm. to play for England and that's where he was. So yeah. it, that, that, that's the thing. Would Danny Murphy have been in a different position if he hadn't been called up at England at youth level? Would he have taken that? I know, he probably would have done. There'd been many that have done that. But I spoke, when I was on with Keith a few months ago talking about this very issue, it's, it, it sits, I'm very uncomfortable, and I have been throughout my international career when lads have come in, when, and Carrie was talking about last night, who did you support in, in Euro 88? Who did you support in Italia 90? It, it, it is a bugbearer. It is, and I can't get away from that. It has been. I've, I've, it's, I've sat very uncomfortable with lads that have, are getting a cap when they don't necessarily see or haven't necessarily seen themselves as being Irish and supporting the team. That's where I am.